Fresh Bake, we just rope dropped Disney's California Adventure, where we tested some of our favorite strategies for those first two hours in the park, 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Let's find out which attractions we hit and which ones we missed, all coming up next on Fresh Bake. Good rope drop morning, everybody. <laughs> We're back in the parks for another rope drop. This time, though, we are rope dropping California Adventure. Uh, popular demand. People like the rope drop strategy videos that we've done for Disneyland. Never done one for DCA. Part of the reason is because I don't have a rope drop strategy for DCA because I don't do a lot of rope drops at DCA. Hello friends, welcome to Disney California Adventure. For your enjoyment, the park will be opening at 8 a.m. Thank you. And we hope you enjoy your day with us here at the Disneyland Resort. Doing a quick scan of how things look now, and it's a little different than how they rope drop at Disneyland where they've got the hub. The hub is, is a natural setting for a rope drop situation because the entrance to all the lands are all in the same place. You've got something like that here at DCA with Carthay Circle, but for some reason, they're, they're doing it a little different here. They, they've pushed up the, the rope drop for most of the park is is at the entrance to Avengers Campus. I mean, it makes sense that you want to have it close to Avengers Campus, a land entrance where there's going to be a lot of attention being paid to uh, web slingers. So there's that. Turn around and come back to Carthay Circle. You've got Grizzly Peak for Soren around the world. This is this is only for those guests who want to rope drop Soren. And then to the left, you've got Hollywood Boulevard. This is for guests who are looking to rope drop Mission Breakout. Or, I guess Monsters, Inc., if you're really into that. And then, of course, back down the parade quarter, this is for guests who are looking to rope drop Avengers Campus and Web Slingers, Cars Land, Raider Springs Racers, or down to Pixar Pier for Incredicoaster or Toy Story Midway Mania. By the way, if you're wondering what this queue is on the right, that's actually got guests going into the park right now. That's uh, Magic Morning, Extra Magic Hours for hotel guests, you know, property hotel guests, Disneyland Hotel. So naturally, your first objective is to figure out which one attraction do you need to hit first because unlike Disneyland, where everything is, you know, closer together, everything is more intimate, DCA is considerably more spread out, the lands are more spread out, the entrances to each land are more spread out, so you have to kind of really commit to that one attraction which is the most important attraction to you. That's the one you should rope drop. It, I mean, there is a there is a, a, a component of efficiency, et cetera, but for me, whenever I ask, you know, people ask, what about Toy Story? What about Incredicoaster? What about uh, Mission Breakout? I always say, well, what, what's important to you? What is, what is your highest priority? That's where you should go. Personally, I don't have a high priority. <laughs> I am about efficiency. That is my highest priority. But before we can even make that choice, that decision, be mindful of which attractions are open. Uh, it is often the case that there are attractions that do not open when the rope drops. There are attractions that are closed. Hi guys, good morning. For example, uh, this cast member to my right who you can hear talking about various things is reminding guests that Radiator Springs Racers is closed right now. It's on a 10 day refurb. So don't try to rope drop Cars Land, okay? <laughs> You can also check the Disneyland app. Scroll through the app and you'll see, it will, it'll say that the standby queues are not being offered if you're here prior to 8 a.m. If you're not here for rope drop. But look for Lightning Lane. Look for whether or not Lightning Lane is being offered. If you see a time, 8.05, 8 o'clock for Lightning Lane, then that attraction is open. If you see that they're, they're not offering a, a return time for Lightning Lane, like in Coaster here, that, is very likely the case that Incredicoaster is also not going to be ready. It's not closed, but it's not going to be ready for rope drop. Getting back to that topic of what to choose. I'm, a, I'm an efficiency guy. I like to know what's the quickest, most efficient way to do the most things in the, in the shortest amount of time, right? Soren, for me, is the most inefficient attraction, uh, especially for standby. I hate waiting in the Soren queue, in the standby queue, especially peak times. You know, after everybody showed up and you have to cut, you have to do battle with Lightning Lane. And that's really what you're trying to do, as we've talked about in previous cases, is you're trying to you're trying to create a win 
over Lightning Lane. They're trying to beat the Lightning Lane crowd. That's a crowd, the, the sword around the world crowd, that's a crowd that I want to beat, okay? <laughs> because I don't want to wait in that standby crowd. So I am very tempted to wait a rope drop soaring. Meanwhile, you try to rope drop Toy Story or a Critter Coaster, uh, you have now committed to that back half of the park. And if you want to come back and ride Soren, you've now got to traverse the rest of the park to come back and do that. Whereas if I do Soren first, I can work my way back, hitting you know various attractions in a row. It's more efficient that way in terms of time spent navigating between attractions. The only problem with that is that Soren takes forever. <laughs> Soren is a very long attraction. It takes a while to go through the, to get people into the queues. It takes a while, and I don't mean just you know, waiting in standby. There is going to be no standby. We're, we're going to be competing against five people. But uh, it takes a while to, to make your way to the show. Then you've got the pre-show. you got to see Putty, you know, and, and put on your uh, seatbelt and all that stuff. you gotta, you got to corral all those guests into the building. And then you've got to watch, you know, a five or eight minute show. And then it takes a, a little while to get them. It's not like going to Pirates of the Caribbean where you just kind of jump in the boat and jump out of the boat. Time is precious. Minutes count. So if you're spending a whole bunch of time, if you're, I'm going to spend a half an hour. I'm going to spend a half an hour probably going on Soren. Have I cost myself too much time, too much opportunity? I could do that and maybe Web Slingers if I'm on the way, maybe Mission Breakout. I mean, once you make that choice, you could probably only do one other major attraction. And then you have to decide, now that you've got that, with that last star, you got to hope that crowds haven't accumulated too much at some of your other favorites, like Radiator Springs Racers, which by the way is closed today, so I'm not even gonna try, but like Radiator Springs or Incredit Coaster or Toy Story. Because I'm gonna, you know, if I'm doing this strategy, I'm probably gonna do Soren and then either Web Slingers or Mission Breakout because they're on the way. I don't wanna come back. And then I'm gonna try to, and I'm gonna hope for the best. I'm, I'm, giving, my, I'm giving my strategy away right now, what I'm gonna do this morning. And then I'm gonna hope for the best when it comes to Toy Story and Incredit Coaster. So our crowd, I would say, grew by almost double since the, what was it, the 10 minute point. So I would expect something similar on the other side. It's causing me already to reconsider my plan after Soren, but we'll see what happens here first. My, my guesstimation is we're gonna spend 30 minutes and if we can get inside of that, if we can get it closer to 20, that's a win. This is one of the concerns that I had with Soren, talking about how much time it takes. This is it, this is, you know, there's no shows before us for the first show, but we're still waiting. We've been standing here, oh, there it goes. We stood here for a couple of minutes, I would say, maybe two, three minutes. Which again, in the grand scheme of things, it's not a big deal, but at rope drop, minutes count. It's excruciating. <laughs> Be honest, I'm going, I'm going through a lot of emotions right now, a lot of anxiety. We've just been standing here. It's now 8:07, 8:08 maybe, and we still haven't even started the pre-show, the, the, the pre-show, pre-show. There it is. Hello. Now finally. Sorry. Oh man. My name is Be Light Attendant today. We'll begin boarding in a few minutes, but first I'd like to acquaint you with some important safety information. Just put the belt through the loop in the center strap before buckling. Nice work, pal. And you will be here. There it is. Thank you. So if you or your little...
I gotta tell you, I am <laughs> significantly shocked. Shocked. I was excruciating at first for a minute there, but we actually got done with that. We walked out of there. We walked out of there at, I think it's 8.17. That's one minute faster than it took us to do Space Mountain when we rope dropped. And we were at the front of the rope for Space Mountain. 8.17 to get out of Soren. And now the question is, what's next? I feel like the second most difficult attraction to do standby at DCA is Toy Story. I feel like the other attractions won't build up. The standby queue won't build up quickly or as quickly as they do at Toy Story. So I, I think that's what I'm going to do is I talked about reversing my my position because I thought I was going to do Mission Breakout or Web Slingers next. But I feel like those can wait for us. Those will be those will still be available. I'm not trying to do everything by 10 o'clock. That's not the goal. The goal is to try to do every single attraction by 10, obviously. It's just to maximize, get as much done as we can. Four is good. If we could do five, that would be a victory, I think. We did we did five at Disneyland, but that was that was optimal. <laughs> I don't know how optimal we're gonna get. Okay, we've got a situation here. From a distance I can see that Toy Story is non-operational. There's a bunch of guests just posted here. See, this is the risk, man. We're gonna obviously go to hitting credit coaster and hope for the best, but man, that's just put a kibosh on our day. The fact that everything is so spread out, you take a, you, you roll the dice and you cross the park to go ride Toy Story. I mean, I could have checked the app, I should have, but I checked it before the rope dropped and it was open. So uh, there's a possibility that Toy Story gets scratched off our list completely. Credit coaster should be a breeze. Posted wait time says 10 minutes. We'll walk right on. It's 8.25. It did take us about eight minutes just to get to this point, which is not optimal. time it is right now I'm gonna guess 834 that's pretty good considering we're gonna to get to go right next door this is the closest of any attraction you know being able to just jump right over so we're gonna get this one done in probably the next 15 minutes we'll have three before nine which is good all right 836 and we're gonna roll into the Toy Story queue it says it's 25 minutes I don't, how is that even possible? Right here at Toy Story 
That can't be right. Oh, they got, they do have people stacked up back there in the, in the little barn area. This is bad. I was hoping we'd be done by nine, but I don't think that's done with this attraction by nine. I don't think that's gonna happen. I'd have got 25, maybe accurate. Okay, that wasn't too excruciating. It's 8.47. I'm gonna guess two or three minutes to our ride vehicle, which means we would or will be done with Toy Story Midway Mania by 9 a.m. Uh, 8.51 to our vehicle, so it's about 15 minutes. Uh, it will be done by 9, so this is, we're, we're on a good track, we're gonna good pace just like we did for Disneyland. Uh, I can't shoot and record, so I'm, we're going in. I'm just gonna play. <laughs> 163.9, that's best in vehicle. <laughs> I feel like that's about as well as I've ever done in this game. 163.9. I don't know where any of the big value targets are or how to do them. I just try to go for as much as I can, but uh, yeah, that's, I think that's as good as I've ever done. Nine oh one, and we're out here back on Pixar Pier again. Just taking a quick look at Incredicoaster. You can't see it, but I can. Thirty minutes now it says for Incredicoaster. So. Uh, that's interesting. Yeah, that's it's starting to build up. I didn't look at Toy Story, but I would imagine That it's you know beyond that or it's closer to the 25 minute figure. We did it in 15 was it? What did I say 840 it was 836 840 it was, yeah, about we did about 15 minutes uh, So it's nine o'clock now. I want to reiterate. This is the same thing that I said I said last time for Disneyland for me the objective here is to knock out as many lightning lane attractions as possible uh, so that you you know to get a win over those attractions don't try to hit any standby attractions save those for after 10 o'clock because you don't have that competition that you will eventually already is happening with lightning lane having said that i'm not gonna be mad at you if you take this opportunity to just go ahead and knock out the rest of pixar pier uh jesse's critter carousel and uh, the, the fun wheel, which is bought, you know a difficult attraction to hit as well. Silly Symphony, uh, you know the Golden Zephyr. Hi guys, you know Goofy Sky School. Not a bad idea to hit Goofy Sky School either. So I, I'm not mad if you want to do that. Personally, I'm gonna head back over to the Avengers Campus and see if I can't knock out one or both. Uh, or actually, we got three opportunities. Hey guys, uh, we got three opportunities in that direction. Web Slingers. Mission Breakout and Monsters Inc. I mean, Monsters Inc. is gonna be—it's a throwaway. It's the last thing. If we can get it in, we will. But I want to see if I can't beat the crowd a little bit on either Web Slingers or Mission Breakout. It's up to you, really, which one you choose. By the way, I'm also not gonna be mad at you if you want to hit Cars Land at this point at nine o'clock. Uh, this is again, this is a lot like where the conversation we were having last last week or whatever with Stan or uh, Disneyland. And maybe you go to you know uh, Fantasyland, do the dark rides, that kind of thing. Uh, I'm not, you know, Cars Land's a good option. Uh, you know, you can hit, you can do this whole thing in the last hour, the whole land, I think, and that includes Raider Springs. I'm not worried about Raider Springs not being available today, and how that impacts my rope drop strategy, because my my strategy for Raider Springs is very very simple. It's the same no matter what time you're here, no matter what day, uh, no matter what time of day. It is single rider. <laughs> that is my one and only strategy for Radiator Springs Racers. I'm not sure that I've ever done any. I think I've done standby a couple times. And back in the day when they had paper fast passes, I did that. But uh, Radiator Springs, and I, I mean that even for groups. Normally, I try to do these strategy guides with groups in mind. I'm not trying to do single rider. I'm not trying to do lightning lane. Uh, but that's one attraction, Radiator Springs, where I suggest even groups go a single rider because you're still kind of together ish you know and everybody's having a good time and and it's just it's just such a long queue it's such a difficult queue to negotiate that you've got to take advantage of that I, I wouldn't suggest doing single rider at Soren I, I want to keep my group together for Soren you want to be in your group right uh, so Raider Springs Racers single rider all day for me I've decided mission breakout 
is our next stop. I figured I just did Toy Story. I don't have to do it again and go to Web Slickers, but there's a very likely uh, probability that we could do both Web Slingers and Mission Breakout before 10 a.m., which is the goal to get see how much we can do between 10, 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. Although this looks, is it closed or is it just a queue? Oh boy. That's not good. And the reason why it's 35 is everybody's cashing in their lightning right now. So we've missed the window. Last week we were very fortunate with our timing. We were hitting the windows, Haunted Mansion and uh, Indiana Jones. We hit those attractions just before lightning lane started to peak, just before the, the standby queue started to accumulate. We missed the window here. At Mission Breakout, we are too late. There's a whole bunch of people on that lightning lane queue and the standby queue is backed up. So it's gonna be 35 and then some problem. Well, I should say it's probably gonna be all of that 35. It may still be less, but I, I think it's gonna be all of that 35. Just a little bit of an edge. I'm waiting for the rest of the standby to find your gantry. Okay, raise your hands for clearance. So it was all of that 35 minutes. It was 9.47, I think, to the door. 35 minutes to the door, off the attraction uh, by 9.49. 10 minutes to spare before 10 a.m. So we're not gonna get a fifth attraction, and I was just checking Web Slingers. Uh, while we we're on the uh, in the queue and it's about 25 30 minutes right now for web slingers Meanwhile when we came out the standby queue is now at 60 minutes So I mean even though it didn't go very well, it wasn't it wasn't optimal I mean it was still quite a bit of savings doing it at 930 uh, As opposed to sometime later in the day. It's a 60 minute wait now having said all of that I do feel like we kind of we we, we slowed down quite a bit at the end DCA is a, is a very different animal when it comes to trying to optimize your day because as we mentioned at the outset, all the attractions are so spread out. They're all so dominated by Lightning Lane. And and by the way, they all have, or not all, but a lot of them have very long, excruciating queues. In spite of the fact that we waited 35 minutes here for Mission Breakout, I would still not recommend rope dropping Mission Breakout for one important reason, and that is because it takes forever just to get through there, to get in the queue, and then to wait for, you know, to kind of walk your way through it, Wait for the doors to open, wait for Rocket to do his spiel, wait for your gantry lift, wait for that whole thing, and, and oh my god. Guys, it is it takes a long time just to get through. That is an easy half an hour. Worse than uh, Soren, which I thought was gonna be a real problem, which that wound up being not too bad. I would Web Slingers is another one. I'm probably not a fan of rope dropping web slingers because uh, of the very long pre-show that they do there as well. So that's a, that's an also a half an hour even at rope drop. So even though we didn't win, I do still feel like we did it okay. Having said that, I'm not prepared to call this the definitive rope drop strategy for DCA. We're gonna have to do a couple more reps uh, just to kind of optimize things a little bit. As for the rest of DCA, it's still a very pleasant time to be here right now at 10 a.m. Actually, it's about 10.15 as I record this. Uh, the, the crowds are still very low. You have plenty of opportunity to take advantage of a lot of those standby attractions that you have been uh, avoiding up until now. We've been focusing only on Lightning Lane, Golden Zephyr, Emotional Whirlwind, Little Mermaid, uh, even attractions that are Lightning Lane, but it's not overly popular in the morning. Rides like uh, Grizzly River Run, it's five minute wait right now on this day, even though it's not a cold day. Monsters Inc. Is, is still pretty available. It's a good point. We did well in hitting those four attractions that we did early on. 
we can knock out the rest of this day if we want, the rest of this park in the next few hours before the sun goes down, for sure. And I will wrap with this reminder, just like we did for the Disneyland uh, rope drop video. Never let any of this get in the way of you having a good time. <laughs> Never let try to optimize your day, try to be uh, a park commando, get in the way of you having fun. Now for some folks, being a commando is fun, but whatever it is that you want to do, just do it. But if you want to try to maximize your morning at Rope Drop, then you know, these are some useful uh, tips for you. Not the definitive DCA Rope Drop guide as of yet. Like I mentioned, we've got to do a few more reps. I want to test out Mission Breakout at nope. Rope Drop, and I want to test out uh, Midway Mania at Rope Drop. But otherwise, I feel like we had a pretty good start to this recon session. So if you like this video, uh, be sure to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already, and then comment with any opinions that you might have about what your strategies might be. And then follow us on Instagram at underscore Fresh Baked, on Twitter at Fresh Baked Disney, that's Fresh with no E, and on TikTok at Fresh Baked Disney. If you like our show and want to show your support, please do consider joining our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash freshbake. Otherwise, thanks again for watching, everybody. We love you. Be safe out there. Be kind to one another. Freshbake. Hey guys, good morning.